awesome, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with me, particularly yeah, no. such a busy little period. So, yeah, give me the, your time. Thank you. <laughs> no worries, man. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it is a bit stressful at the minute, but um, yeah, all good. All good. I have to ask them what's stressing you out. What's going on? <laughs> oh, it's just uh, you know what it's like when new albums and that. Uh, every, any you know, the closer you get to that release date, um, the you know the the, stri- the sort of more and more stuff you have to do. So it's just uh, it's not really that stressful. It's just um, you know it's just getting to that time now. Where it's like come on, you know, last push kind of thing. So so yeah, yeah, we are almost at album release time. How is the overall vibe within Bad Touch as a group? Yeah, we're all right, man. Yeah, it's all, you know, we're carrying on. We're sort of, uh, you know, we're sort of, we're over, you know, 13 years now doing it all together. So we're, we're fairly, fairly safe and uh, yeah, we're all right. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing new really to report other than the new album. We're just sort of, like I say, just uh, buckling down, trying to get all the work done and uh, getting ready for Crimbo as well. So. (laughs) Oh, of course. Yes, of course, of course. Um, we are, of course, talking about your fifth studio album, the eagerly anticipated Bittersweet Satisfaction, out on December 8th via Marshall <laughs> Records. Um, what does this record mean to you? Uh, to me, personally, I mean, as we just touched on, it's it's the sort of summation of uh, a lot of years of work between me and the guys. Uh, you know, it's we've been through loads of ups and downs and that, and obviously everybody, every band's going to say it's, you know, it's the biggest and best version of ourselves uh, that we've ever been, you know? Uh, So uh, it's, it's obviously means a huge amount. Um, It's a little bit, we've thought uh, a lot more about this album. To to me, it's a lot more poignant and a bit more kind of uh, thoughtful, uh, you know, sort of less sort of brash and, and in your face and kind of a bit more kind of, we like to think well sculpted, but I say we'll leave that up to everyone when it comes out. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, just um, it's a, obviously a huge deal uh, and it's still the, the bad touch, you know, and love, hopefully. But it's just a little bit more refined in the edges, hopefully. The reactions to uh, what's been released so far, you've been paying much attention to that. It's been very, very positive. Yeah, it has. It's been really, really good, which does sort of fill you with some confidence. You know, when you sort of release a couple of singles and you start worrying about, you know, the rest of the uh, the album and that. But um, yeah, so the the, the, the sort of the, the fan feedback has been sort of overwhelmingly positive, which, you know, just does take a little bit of weight off your shoulders. But you can't you can't sort of rest on your laurels. You've got to keep, you know, pressing on and that. So, uh, yeah, to everyone who said, you know, uh, thumbs up well done guys we we say thank you very much but uh, but i say uh yeah just i can't wait to get the whole album out there and then take it on the road and and play some of the songs oh absolutely um you seem very relaxed you seem very chill about the release regardless of you know the busyness and stuff going yeah. on but when you hear words like eagerly anticipated and yeah you know people sort of chomping at a bit for this what do you think about that uh Again, I I tend to I tend to try and remain just thankful uh, generally all, all around. Just sort of you know the fact that anyone still gives a crap after thirteen, fourteen, however many years it's been is overwhelmingly uh, unbelievable to 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 not just me but all the guys. We're very very thankful that anyone still gives a toffee what we're doing. So we're just um, we're just really happy to to be part of part of the kind of the new the new rock scene and um be able to keep making the music we love uh and people you know touch wood uh still liking it so yeah mm. it's um it's a yeah a really really nice feeling uh and i say it's just uh uh it, it makes it all worthwhile so. <laughs> yeah it doesn't take far to start trawling through your social media to see that anticipation but i want to kind of take you back a little bit here really to the early part of the album creation process um yeah your vision did you have one at the time uh, other than, oh my God, we need to make an album. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good starting place. It's a which good is, starting which, place. Which is a valid vision. Um, no, so yeah, uh, as I touched on earlier, this album is uh, has been a lot more thoughtful, uh, not only within the metaphor of being thoughtful, but genuinely we have thought about it a lot. Uh, so um, yeah, been a lot of writing. I think we ended up with about something redonkulous like 28 uh sort of tracks that we sort of were workshopping and refined and boiled down and pinched bits from and kind of cannibalized them into the 10 songs that you get um 
uh for the for the album so uh so yeah it's a, again it was sort of was the, the vision really always has been the same which is just we just want to be the the best version of ourselves uh true to ourselves but a, a, as good as we can physically be um at any point and again yeah we've just like we're like this is album number five we can't you know it's not we can't mess around you know it's we've got to make sure that this makes a makes a stamp on the world so yeah i guess it would have been very easy as you say fifth album to not necessarily take your fan base for granted but take yourselves for granted and yeah just 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 do the same old yes uh both 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 could very much be true and possibly you know i'm not saying we're uh infallible i'm sure it has been true at some point in our careers but um but yeah like you say just because we've been around for this long and, and, and you know, we, we wanted to shake up the, the snow globe a little bit, you know what I mean? So uh, we wanted to give, give kind of our, our, our loyal fan base what they wanted whilst also being able to spread our, our uh, artistic wings and kind of veer into sort of an area that possibly we haven't uh, gone into a little bit before. So like I say, still keeping it us, but also being, you know, we don't want it to be this, kiss the sky mark too you know what i mean like mm. just doing doing something that's doing something that's a bit different so yeah i mean it is completely fair to say this is very much a bad touch album as you say refined yeah. to hell um and that's years of experience but you know <laughs> if you're if you're a long-term fan you're not going to hear anything out of the ordinary here in the sense that here's a death metal slash progressive rock jazz epic. core <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> jazz yeah. core. <laughs> talk to me then about this different approach, you know, you, you know, you don't want to do the same thing and you know, you kind of want to keep it still in, in line with what you're doing. Was there anything particularly different when it came to creating, writing and all that that you did? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps we, we, we certainly focused more. I don't know if this sounds like such a, uh, an arty thing to say, but we focused so much more on the song as a whole, rather than like individual riffs or vocal ideas or, or, you know, uh, like you know rather than be going oh that's a cool line or that's a cool guitar lick like we were like yeah but does it serve the song mm. what is the serve what is the songs trying to say what are we trying to say as a unit and actually sort of focus more on the meaning behind um the loud uh martial stacks you know the kind, of, <laughs> kind of what we're what we're what we were trying to convey in each song uh and sort of you know focus like i say focus more on the song it didn't necessarily have to be wall-to-wall guitar riffs and, and stuff and just sort of you know just try and like I say like you know I keep using the same words but like uh, you know just try and refine it down and boil it down into something that was pure and concentrated same words are all good when that is exactly what you want to get across um yeah <laughs> so overall overall is it fair to say that it was a mostly relaxed writing process uh it was relaxed in as much as we uh, I mean, this is not true, but we try not to get, we, we try not to get stressed. <laughs> if you know what I mean? Like we, we try, we, like I say, we've been doing it over well over a decade now. And, uh, you know, we, we know, we know what's happening. We try and just do the best that we can. We are, we do get, like I say, we do get a little bit complacent and suddenly, oh, hang on, it's been four months. We probably really should, you know, actually do something now. So there was a little bit of that went on, but like I say, yeah, the, it, you know we tried to try to stay chill um uh, yeah sorry I've, I've, I've bumbled and forgotten the question what was the question <laughs> you just answered it you try to stay okay. chill it's yeah. uh yeah that... <laughs> that's how chill i am that's a perfect answer i forgot the question so <laughs> oh i love it i love it um is there any particular reason why you've kind of sat on it so long though uh a lot of reasons so <laughs> excuse me um we it's just timings of of working with you know we're we're not uh five teenagers uh from mid norfolk now you know there's a there's a whole team of us and lots of people to to to, to run by and run through it's not in no way sh- blaming anyone else for mm. uh it being so long it's more than definitely uh uh, uh our fault as it were but i say there's more pit more um crossroads and things you've got to ne- negotiate and, and stuff so uh we just we recorded it uh, and then we want to make sure that we've got all the promotion stuff all sorted out all these you know lovely things chatting to good people like yourself and uh you know it all takes time to organize uh, uh you know and we're just uh, uh and then we had a bit of a manufacturing 
blip uh which has pushed the album back uh to the 8th of december so yeah it's all, all going well so far <laughs> so it's actually it's so late in the day it's gonna happen now that's the thing that's it it's happening come come hell or high water so you know from a personal perspective from your specific perspective as vocalist um yeah what are areas across this album that you pushed yourself more than usual so i and as i'm sure uh every singer will say or every every performing artist would say um i i never stop pushing myself like mm-hmm. you know i i i i am admit that i'm not the 21 year old rapscallion that i i once was but i i still push the current me to the absolute limit every album you know to to because i feel like if you're not giving it 130 percent on the album then what are you doing <laughs> you know what i mean mm. so um so yeah definitely from from my perspective and i know this is true of the other guys as well we have given uh, every part of our mind body and souls uh to this album uh within every regard whether it be these kind of things doing the interviews right boiling down to the actual performing of the tracks on the on the album so um so yeah i it definitely pushed myself uh mm. beyond beyond where i had done before because i never stopped pushing myself and the day i stop pushing myself is the day that i'll give up so <laughs> fair enough well said um, and sticking with that then can you remember or can you think of anything that was particularly challenging for you that you found that really, really tested you. Um, I don't know if I should say this really, but other than the fact I had a rotten cold when I was recording the album, it was, <laughs> it's like, you know, wow. So, um, uh, but we got through it. You know, nasal sprays will do a, do a wonder. Sudafed. This album's uh, <laughs> not sponsored by Sudafed, but might be. Um, that's a little scoop for you. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, just you know. Uh, so I've distracted myself again, but um, yeah. So it's um, yeah. We I, that was that was the only real big thing. Um, mm, we hell of a thing everyone, though. Everyone, everyone kind of had their thing, but we, I, uh, yeah. It's, I had a little bit of a sniffle, but other than that, it was fine. So <laughs> it's a hell of a thing to have to go through. I love the fact that I said wow because man, you would obviously never bloody know. Well, yeah. Well, that's that's you know that was. Yeah, well, I've, I've, I thank uh, all the glitter sparklers and things like that. But no, I, no, I, I am genuinely, you know, and I don't say this very often. I am genuinely quite proud of myself uh, for that, for that, uh, those five days because I really oh. did, uh, you know, because obviously, you know, it's like talk about stress because I've got everyone's, you know, it's it's been everyone's like time and uh, and money getting there and doing it, and now I've got five days to do what I've got to do. Well, it throws the whole train off the railroad. Mm. Um, and I'm there and I've gone, oh my God, what am I going to do? But you've just got to, you've got to just knuckle down and do the best you can do. And I'm so, so proud with how the, the album's come out. So shout out uh, to Ollie and and uh, Adam at Marshall Studios. And of course, uh, Ramesh um, for mixing it and doing all the, the glitter and that. So we are a team. Incredible you know what team. I mean? so, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, flip that around then. Favourite moments that you can think of. Moments during the creation process, recording, writing, whatever. So I think it was possibly when we all went joined back uh, together at the Marshall Studio to to kind of hear what we'd done, you know, but uh, as kind of bare uh, recorded tracks, you know, and you know, uh, you, you know how it goes in the studio. You record the you record the stuff, and then it goes off to the mixing engineer, and he does the mixing. But so we're we're sitting there with these track these tracks, which literally are our voices and our guitars coming out of an amp into a microphone and it's and it sounds huge you know it sounds the biggest and best bad touch album that we've ever heard so we're like crikey if this is the starting block and we're going to give it to Ramesh what the hell is he going to do with it (laughs) you know what I mean so um, and you know again then then the albums you know we heard the album the the tracks came back and it was like wowzers you know so that was a good moment you can still remember that feeling that when you got yeah yeah, exactly. And that's that's the reason that we all still do it, because it's for moments like that. You know, it's like that moment when you finish a show on stage and you get that rush of like, this is what I meant to do. And then mm. like we're sitting on sitting on that Chesterfield in the Marshall studio and uh, hearing the stuff back and going, oh, there's a reason that we spent and, you know, an ungodly amount of hours toiling away and arguing in a shed over the creation of these songs because we care about them and they sound amazing. So, you know, that's a. Uh, 
it's a good feeling. You kind of said it now, I'm going to ask, uh, considering you said earlier on about how many tracks you had and how much cutting up and chopping yeah. up you did, were there any yeah. really major disputes over a certain section or song? I mean, yes, it's it's it goes without saying, yes, of course there were. Um, but when you've been in a band with the same same people as long as as long as we have, you you know, we know how each other work. We know we know what's going through each other's brain. We know we know when to drop something because it's winding someone up. You know, we're not about pushing people until they break anymore. You know what I mean? Like you, you could just, you just chill, you just go, all right, fine. We'll do it your way for now, but we'll come back to it next week and we'll maybe have another chat. You know, you know what I mean? So it's about uh, fighting the battles when you need to fight them and leaving them when you don't need to fight them. You know? So, uh, so, uh, so yes, there were disputes. No, there wasn't any like any fisticuffs or like, you know, anything that was too dramatic. No, no glass bottles or anything. <laughs> Um, is there a particular track from the album for you personally that hasn't been released yet that you're yeah. really interested to see the reaction to? Um, I mean, yeah, all of them really. All of the ones. Oh. I mean, I know that's I know that's a cop out answer, but I will I will narrow it down. I've, I'm just playing for time while I think of one in my head. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so like I say, there's you got your kind of the kind of ones that we've released. You know, as you do with singles, in our mind, are kind of the more um user-friendly kind of ones possibly you know dare i say it commercial more commercial tracks um but yeah i think i'd quite like i'd quite like because we've obviously you know got the, got the obligatory uh rock ballad on there you know so i'm quite interested to see how people uh here come back again because uh that's um a song that's very uh sort of close to my heart i i wrote the sort of the, the core of that song uh on my acoustic so and you know the four the four other guys in bad touch who obviously have taken it and turned it 1000 percent more than what i was doing uh with it plus you know um all the additional stuff from bob on the keys and nick and katie on the vocals and stuff you know i was just quite interested to see how how uh how this sort of the general public take mm. take a take a sort of a little love song um because it's not something that we really do that much you know <laughs> so, so yeah it is a beautiful piece of music yeah cheers man overall i mean bad touch of course you, you guys ooze positivity you know it, you yeah. your style your state of mind is always positive um i have to ask how is how easy is it to stay in that positive mind frame Particularly, you know, in a world that constantly breeds negativity around you. Yeah, I mean, very good question. Uh, it's it's one of those things because people seem to always forget that we are people too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so there is a sense of catharsis and kind of self-help in, in what we do. Like, you know, uh, some people, uh, so, you know, some artists find solace and comfort in in being in drowning themselves in 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 sorrow or kind of like being a bit miserable and sort of like that's how they get it out whereas we we kind of we we're about the party we always have been about the party kind of like you know it's just it, i i can only again i can only talk for myself because mm. i'm the only one here but um uh you know I, I can only think about what i want when i go out and I don't go out to be miserable. I go out to have a good time. And I go out to see bands and smile and jump around like an idiot. So that's what that's what I kind of want to make people feel, if you know what I mean. So yeah. and and luckily I'm I'm with four of the guys who, who think the same thing. So um so yeah, that's that's kind of how how we how we do it is by the grace of God that that's what we want to do. Uh and you know, and it, because it helps us as much as it helps hopefully helps uh, everyone else so yeah and of course that is hugely reflected in in your live show as much as anything yeah. else um you know i had a look the first quarter of 2024 looking pretty damn busy already for shows so i guess yeah yeah i love that though that's great to see um that they're more set up is that the major plan really for 2024 just to focus on touring and playing as live as much as possible so full you know full honesty between friends here carl um are our- kind of our blinkers are on a little bit with regards to bit of sweet satisfaction because obviously it's not out yet so 
and we've had so much stress and kind of uh i keep saying stress i mean, it's fine it's not stress stress is a horrible word but uh, yeah i keep um we've had so much build up to this to this album and it, like you say it's been a long time coming that we've kind of almost got our blinkers on a little bit so yes it is going to be all about bittersweet satisfaction yes it is going to be all about going out and playing shows because we've had a, such a quiet year it's been far too quiet for us uh, as you know i'm sure um we live to be out on the road doing shows and playing lots of um you know playing lots of shows and being in front of people so 2024 stands to be a lot more of that we're hoping to get a lot more festivals do a lot more tours get into europe a bit more uh yeah so it, just hoping it's going to be busy you know it's all, it's all one of these things you can never quite tell but just hoping we're going to get out there and, and do as much as we can in front of as many people as possible that's it all we want to hear is that you're, you're planning or hoping to be as busy as possible yeah. and that's what we want for you and i love that you brought up festivals because one of the things i adore about bad touch is stick you guys on any bloody <laughs> bill from glastonbury to bloodstock to down to the hellfest to whack it and you'll kill it any of those, any of those, we're quite free to do. It, our, our email is open and my phone is right here. So if, if Wacken or Hellfest want to let us know, then we're, we're quite happy to be there. <laughs> no, I have a word. You. Yeah, if you could have a, put a word in, that'd be brilliant. Uh, no, cheers, Carl. That's really kind of you. No, yeah, we, like you say, we don't get to do those kind of things uh, as often as we'd like. So we ain't going to turn up and be half cocked. You know what I mean? You've got to go out there and and show everyone who's, uh, who's kind enough to be standing in front of you when you go on stage, because as we all know, that's not a, a guaranteed thing, um, that they made the right decision and that you're here for them. So that's what, you know, that's what we try and do. Oh, well put, I love that. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, next year, next year, 14th year yeah. as a band, 14 years is what you'll have reached. It's an immense time in this industry and congratulations to you for surviving that yeah. long. But what I want to yeah. ask you is what you personally think makes Bad Touch such an appealing band to so many different people around the world? Uh, well, that's very kind. You may definitely make us sound uh, more of a big deal than we actually are. But, <laughs> but um, uh, no, I think it's... Everyone wants a smile, man. And like we talked to, talked on earlier, everyone, every, everyone wants to go out and have their own version of a good time because it is subjective. Like all art, it's subjective. So your good time is different than my good time. And, uh, you know, so I think that that want for a little night of kind of just youth, euphoric uh, catharsis and kind of, you know, uh, is, is, uni is universal. It's a, it's a universal language. You know, people say music is a universal language and it is. And so is, and, a, and gigs are a universal language as far as I'm concerned. You could take any, I think you could take anyone on this planet, put them in the right gig and they'll, they'll, their minds will be blown. You know what I mean? So um, we just try and tap into, try and keep as wide a shot as possible and tap into that kind of feeling. I think if everyone feels comfortable and everyone feels welcome and everyone feels safe, then they can't, it's not that they can't have a bad time, but they're certainly more inclined to have a good time. So, um, so yeah, it's just, it's just about doing that, making people feel safe and welcome, um, which uh, everyone is uh, at mm. a bad touch show. Um, so yeah, it's just about doing that. And, uh, and yeah. The embodiment <laughs> of a good time. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Stevie, this is Ozzy Osbourne and in his head, are randomized cards uh, of yeah. anything and everything. And uh, not just written by me and others, but by bands and other oh, okay. artists over the uh, years. So I'm going to pull some out if you do not mind answering that makes some. It, that makes it all the more terrifying. But yes, please, uh, <laughs> Mr. Osbone, uh, be kind. <laughs> all right, you're up first with number five. What is the first thing you do after you wake up? Um, to quote Serge Tankian, Get up now, I'm joking. Uh, that's not that's not how the song goes. Anyway, uh, uh, grab a brush and put a little makeup is what I do. No, um, no, I don't. I uh, uh, coffee usually. Coffee is the the first thing. I zombify myself down the stairs straight towards the kettle and have a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm fully uh, well aware of my uh, mild caffeine uh, addiction, so <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a boring answer. I wish it could be something like. You know, I don't know. I can't think of a, a really exciting rock and roll. Throw a television out a window, but that's yeah. not. I, I don't have that much money at the minute, so I don't think anyone's answered that one in a really, really, you know, wow way. Anyway, it is <laughs> yeah. people, as you said. Um, yeah. Okay. Twenty-eight. Cats or dogs? Yeah. 
Oh, again, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'd never hurt a cat. Um, but I, I am big, big, big dog lover myself. Uh, you know, again, not not for any issue if you if you love cats, but uh, I, I love me a soppy, floppy uh, a dog. So, so yeah, you have I'm a dog. A uh, I I had a dog, but she passed away a few years ago. So, uh, bro- sort of family dog. So it broke our hearts. So we haven't uh, we haven't uh, found the strength to to replace her yet. So, you know what I mean? If pets mm. break your heart, I don't know why we go through it, but we do, don't we? So, <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Um, I had two cats. They both passed away when it each within a year of each other last year, and then uh, I now have two more. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want, you know, I know, and uh, yeah, you, we just yeah, yeah, can't help it. You never, you never, you never forget any of them though. It's you know, it sucks mm. balls when they go, but there you go. Okay, uh, number forty-four. Who is someone that you cite as an inspiration? And this can be from any walk of life. Wow. Uh, I mean you know put on the spot i i'm sure i'm sure if given enough time i could come up with some real philosophical mm. uh answer about some you know real nice philosophizer who's spoken some really good things but i can't at the minute so i'm going to i'm going to veer towards the music uh side of the world um inspiration for for me as a vocalist again i'm talking personally here um got to be you know like paul rogers free and bad company uh, obviously Robert Plant. I'd never want to start with Robert Plant because I feel like everyone starts with Robert Plant. Mm. But like, yeah. Uh, but like, yeah. Chris, Chris Robertson, uh, Black Crows. Um, uh, uh, Chris again from Blackstone Cherry. Uh, big singers. I like big singers. Mm. Big attitudes. Big sex appeal. Big feel good vibes. That's what I'm. What I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, uh, fifty two. What is a horror movie scenario you'd hate to find yourself in? Any of them. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't answer any of them is obviously a psychopath. <laughs> like, oh no, I'd love to be strapped up to one of those saw machines. Actually, that'd be great. That'd be really up my street. So, okay, uh, yeah, absolutely, any of them. I feel like, what the hell? Why would I want to be in any of those situations? So, um, clowns. I hate clowns. You can take oh. clowns. Uh, mate like seriously uh i've i could never ever do one of those kind of like horror you know, dungeon experiences where you get chased by clowns or whatever so i literally would roundhouse a clown <laughs> i'd jean claude ah. i'd jean claude van dad van dam the teeth out of that clown <laughs> oh wow have you never done any kind of scare maze or anything like that no no no, no. i'm i fully i'm fully uh confident in my own uh, willingness to go on air and say that I am a right softy uh, and I cannot vibe with any kind of being scared or any of that. I don't, I feel, I feel like, and again, if I'm going to get on my soapbox and really get some people mad, I'm going to say that people who do like it are absolute psychos. <laughs> I don't understand okay. what's wrong with you. You are ill people <laughs> and you need help. <laughs> so- <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay. I've got one more for you and this requires complete honesty okay. are you, are you I've, been, social... I've been lying up to here i've been lying yeah up to here, so. well it's because yeah. this one is I th- <laughs> this is one i think people would like to say no to automatically oh okay that's All what right. it is okay are you, a, are you are you a social media addict am i a social media addict so uh i find myself all too often being on my phone with no real good reason mm. so uh and it's something that I'm trying to improve about myself. I'm trying to read a bit more. Uh, try when I go to pick my phone up in the morning. Uh, I sort of just like no, just give your brain a second to kind of you know come round, and you don't need to immediately check your Facebook or your whatever your stupid little game that you downloaded two weeks ago. And now you're addicted to, um, you know. So, uh, you know, quite possibly yes, yeah. but you know, uh, but you recognise it. Yeah, going with a tentative yes, but trying to better oneself, I think, is possibly the the the, re- the, the truly honest answer. <laughs> yeah, because it's such so bloody difficult, as you say, naturally yeah. reaching for that phone first thing in the morning just to see what's going on in the night while you've been yeah. asleep. Yeah, I I wholeheartedly, and I mean this truthfully, if I wasn't in bad touch or I didn't have a uh, a kind of uh, a medium that that required said evils i would 100 percent not be on any of them you know what i mean like i'd just mm. be i'd be in a cabin in the woods raising wolves like 
the curse of the band. You've got to do that stuff now. Yeah, yeah. But it'll be worth it because... 8th of December, Bittersweet Satisfaction is released via Marshall Records. It is a phenomenal release. I dare I say your best work to date, but you didn't hear that oh. from me. Let other people oh. make the <laughs> mind up. Uh, Stevie, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. No, cheers, Carl. It's been a genuine pleasure, mate. So uh, whenever you want, we'll do this again. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website where reviews, news and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.